starting valve. Jutewerken Burmeister wine instruction film. Starting valve to K90 GF engine, replacement and overhaul. This operation is also described in the instruction book, volume two, maintenance part 907-4. Before we commence work, we must follow four safety regulations, namely, stop the engine, block the starting mechanism by closing the cock to the starting air distributor, connect the turning gear, open the display cocks. And so now this has been done, we can begin changing the starting valve. One prerequisite is a normal set of tools, including a dynamometric wrench and a spare valve to be obtained from supply. The special tools required are a grinding tool and a special extractor intended for the starting valve. We must also have an abrasive available, carborundum 200, as well as a cleaner. Begin dismantling by loosening the pipe joint for control air at the angle junction. Remove the nuts and spacing pipes from the clevis pins holding the valve. Fit the extractor and fasten the two pins in the special extractor mounting holes on the valve. With the aid of a wrench, tighten the nut on the spindle of the extractor. Then lift the valve out and release it. Now give the hole in the cylinder cover a proper cleaning and inspect the valve seat carefully. If it is shown to be sooty or burnt, it must be ground with the grinding tool. First fit the guide onto the handle of the grinding tool and then the milling attachment. Introduce the tool until the milling cutter reaches the valve seat and grind as shown here. Now we shift the milling attachment to the grinding wheel. We apply carborundum 200 and a few drops of cylinder oil to the wheel. Then introduce the tool again and carry out the finishing. Make another proper cleaning and check the valve seat again. The seat should now be smooth and free of burrs and other defects. Dry the replacement valve clean and lubricate the new O-rings with a drop of oil before placing them in the valve. If the ring should seize when the new valve is put in position, tap it lightly with a tin hammer. When the new starting valve is in position, put the nuts and spacing pipes on again. Tighten the nuts with the dynamometric wrench to 215 newton meters, or 22 kpm. Fit the angle junction again, and complete the whole operation by joining the pipe for the control air.
overhauling. When doing work of this type, it is important that the working area is clean. Paper, plastic foil, or something similar is excellent to spread out on the workbench. The special tools we need for an overhaul are an emery roller, a mounting tool, and a special pin spanner. Carborundum 200, grinding paper, cleaner, and a normal tool kit are also necessary. With the aid of a hexagon spanner, the screws are loosened at the top and the lid can be lifted off so that the spindle will not cut into the seat. The pin spanner plays an important part here. Hold the spindle firmly with the pin spanner. Loosen the nuts holding the valve spindle. If the valve spindle seizes when it is being taken out, tap it lightly with a tin hammer. To remove piston and cylinder units, use a special fitting tool. Note how the tool is introduced into the valve. Note that the tool is inserted from the same direction as the spindle has been removed. Put on a washer and nut. Then the whole package of cylinders and pistons are gathered together and can be easily removed. Do not forget that the valve spring and one cylinder must be taken out by hand. Begin by disposing of the old O-rings. We remove the soot gathered round the seat with the grinding paper. By means of the emery roller, the grinding surface of which must be carefully checked to see that it is really smooth and absolutely even, we will grind the valve seat. If the tool seems flawless, we apply abrasive, carborundum 200, and a few drops of oil. The grinding is done by means of repeated light turns until the surface is perfectly smooth. It is the surface here that matters. The valve housing must now be properly cleaned with, for instance, paraffin oil. Blow it completely dry and clean. And check the results of the grinding. The valve spindle and the valve housing should be ground together. And here the pin spanner is used again. Be sure that the spindle is in contact with the whole grinding surface.
clean all the details in, for instance, paraffin oil. Blow them clean and dry with compressed air. Finally, lubricate them with cylinder oil or mollicoat grease. When the valve is to be reassembled, it is important that the details are taken in the correct order. Begin by putting in one cylinder and its valve spring in place. Now we have three packages, consisting of four parts each, as in this picture. At the left, we see a spacing ring, and then the guide, which is the smallest unit. Then comes the piston, which we recognize by its fluting, and lastly, the cylinder. The cylinder is easily identified by its holes. We place the parts on the fitting tool as follows. First, a piston as we have already placed one cylinder in the valve housing by hand. Then come the spacing ring, guide, piston, and a cylinder. Then comes the next package, spacing ring, guide, piston, and cylinder. When the tool is fitted, we place it in the valve housing. Now the valve spindle remains. This is put in position by means of the pin spanner. Put on a washer and nut, hold firmly at the other end with the pin spanner. Do not forget the locking nut. Put the lid back and replace the screws. Tighten them with the hexagon spanner. If the now overhauled valve is to be put in the stores, the O-rings should not be fitted as they may dry during storage. 